he that watereth shall be watered also himself. We are here taught the great lesson that to get we must give, that to accumulate we must scatter, that to make ourselves happy we must make others happy, and that in order to become spiritually vigorous we must seek the spiritual good of others. In watering others we are ourselves watered. How? Our efforts to be useful bring out our powers for usefulness. We have latent talents and dormant faculties which are brought to light by exercise. Our strength for labor is hidden of even from ourselves until we venture forth to fight the Lord's battles or to climb the mountains of difficulty. We do not know what tender sympathies we possess until we try the widow's tears and soothe the orphan's grief. We often find in attempting to teach others that we gain instruction for ourselves. Oh, what gracious lessons some of us have learned at sick beds. We went to teach the scriptures. We came away blushing that we knew so little of them. In our converse with poor saints, we are taught the way of God more perfectly for ourselves and get a deeper insight into the divine truth so that watering others makes us humble. We discover how much grace there is where we had not looked for it, and how much the poor saints may outstrip us in knowledge. Our own comfort is also increased by our working for others. We endeavor to cheer them, and the consolation gladdens our own heart. Like the two men in the snow, one chafed the other's limbs to keep him from dying, and in so doing kept his own blood in circulation, and saved his own life. The poor widow of Sarepta gave from her scanty store a supply for the prophet's wants, and from that day she never again knew what want was. Give then, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and running over. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. We may gain much solace by considering what God has not said, what he has said is inexpressibly full of comfort and delight. What he has not said is scarcely less rich in consolation. It was one of these said nots which preserved the kingdom of Israel in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash. For the Lord said not that he would blot out the name of Israel from under heaven. In our text we have an assurance that God will answer prayer, because he hath not said unto the seed of Israel, Seek ye me in vain. You who write bitter things against yourself should remember that let your doubts and fears say what they will. If God has not cut you off from mercy, there is no room for despair. Even the voice of conscience is of little weight if it be not seconded by the voice of God. What God has said tremble at, but suffer not your vain imaginings to overwhelm you with despondency and sinful despair. Many timid persons have been vexed by the suspicion that there may be something in God's decree which shuts them out from hope, but here is a complete refutation to that troublesome fear, for no seeker can be decreed to wrath. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of earth. I have not said, even in the secret of my unsearchable decree, Seek ye me in vain. God has clearly revealed that he will hear the prayer of those who call upon him, and that declaration cannot be contravened. He has so firmly, so truthfully, so righteously spoken, there can be no room for doubt. He does not reveal his mind in unintelligible words, but he speaks plainly and positively. Ask and ye shall receive. Believer, O trembler, this sure truth that prayer must and shall be heard. And never, even in the secrets of eternity, has the Lord said unto any living soul, Seek ye me in vain.